So here's something interesting. There's a narrative that's been building across Africa for years now. One about potential, about the next big thing, about regions that could become tech hubs all on their own. But what if I told you that conversation is already outdated? What if one city has moved past potential and they've planted themselves firmly in the present tense? Cape Town isn't trying to become Africa's Silicon Valley anymore. By most measures that matter, it already is. And the numbers backing this aren't projections or wishful thinking. They're current realities that are reshaping how we think about Africa's place in the global tech economy. So today, we're going to be breaking down exactly how Cape Town built a tech ecosystem that's not just leading Africa, but competing on a genuinely global stage. We'll look at the infrastructure that makes it all possible, the talent pipeline that feeds it, the money flowing into it, and why international companies like Amazon and even Canadian startups are choosing Cape Town over established tech hubs worldwide. I want us to start with something that sounds pretty boring, but it's absolutely critical. Internet infrastructure. Because you can have all of the brilliant developers and the visionary entrepreneurs you want, but if your internet connectivity is unreliable, you're almost dead in the water as a fledgling ecosystem or internet ecosystem. Cape Town figured this pretty early. In December of 2011, the city of Cape Town completed a 125 million rand, 500 kilometer optical fiber network project that increased the city's bandwidth by approximately 1,000 times. I want you to listen to me properly. 1,000 times the capacity. This wasn't just an incremental upgrade. It was a fundamental transformation of what was possible in the city. Today, Cape Town has one of Africa's largest open access fiber networks and an internet penetration of around 63 plus percent. That's not just good for Africa, that's competing globally. But infrastructure isn't just cables in the ground, it's also physical spaces where innovation happens. Cape Town now hosts 30 plus co-working spaces, the highest concentration in Africa. Plus, on top of that, there are 22 incubators and accelerator programs. The Bandwidth Barn, operating since 2000, is now regarded as one of the leading ICT business incubators in the world. Its 49 plus tenants and more than 50 successful graduates added over 800 million rand per year to the economy in revenue alone. This contributed to almost 2,500 direct and indirect jobs in Cape Town. This is the unsexy groundwork that makes everything else possible. Networks. But I want to know from you guys, what type of infrastructure do you think your city or region needs to almost attract companies that are in tech primarily? Drop your thoughts below and let's start to chat about it in the comments. It's also pretty useful to understand just how concentrated Cape Town's tech ecosystem has become. For instance, take the Cape Town to Stellenbosch Corridor, which contains 450 tech firms that employ more than 40,000 plus people. To put that into perspective, that's bigger than Nairobi and Lagos combined. Let me repeat that. The tech employment in this one South African corridor exceeds that of Kenya's tech capital and Nigeria's commercial powerhouse. Nearly 60% of South Africa's startups call Cape Town home, and the city hosts 38% of total developers in South Africa, the highest concentration in the country. The investment numbers tell an equally compelling story. In 2020 alone, 88 million US dollars in disclosed investments were injected into Cape Town's tech startup across 46 deals, the highest investments made in South Africa. When Startup Genome published their 2021 Global Startup Ecosystem Report, African startup ecosystems were collectively valued at 6.6 .6 billion US dollars and 6 billion of those dollars were concentrated in just five cities Cape Town, Johannesburg, Lagos, Nairobi and Accra. Three South African cities, Cape Town, Joburg and Durban contributed over 1.1 billion US dollars in exit value in Africa. Cape Town didn't just participate in these rankings it damn near dominated them, ranking first in both regional ecosystem knowledge and regional ecosystem talent and experience. But I want to know from you, do you think that Cape Town's successes in tech might have fueled this growth in digital nomads? Let us know down below and tell us what you also think about that. But here's where things get a little bit more interesting. Cape Town isn't just attracting tech companies because it's cheaper than, for instance, a Silicon Valley, though that doesn't actually hurt it. It's attracting them because of the quality of talent. Within a 50 kilometer radius of Cape Town, there are four world-class universities, two globally recognized business schools, research councils, and public and private coding schools. 
Together they produce more than 12,000 STEM graduates and more than 500 coders plus every single year. The University of Cape Town, for instance, retained its spot as Africa's top university, while Stellenbosch University ranks around third best on the continent. But the talent story goes beyond just the numbers of graduates. When Mike Bignall, founder and CEO of Canadian startup Cost Certified, opened the Cape Town office, he highlighted something pretty crucial. South Africa offers a high caliber of untapped talent pool for international businesses when it comes to an IT ecosystem. Between unemployed graduates and people who don't have any formal qualifications but have all of the relevant soft skills and even coder skills and the potential, it's not difficult to build a strong and successful local team. In fact, he went on to say, he was so bullish in Cape Town that his company went and acquired offices and began hiring weeks before any one of their team was even on the ground in South Africa, conducting their entire process almost virtually because they believed in what was in Cape Town. Then there's another factor that international companies have been leveraging since 2004. South Africans, particularly first and second language English speakers, often have neutral accents that make it easier to connect with customers across the world. This has made them particularly sought after for sales development as well as customer success roles. In fact, major multinationals like Amazon and Panasonic, they recognized this opportunity years ago. And now with more businesses arriving every single year, they compete for this talent and it's intense. Actually, if you're in tech or considering getting into tech, what skills do you think are most valuable right now? Share your thoughts about like getting into this career down below. The ecosystem has already produced genuinely impressive success stories. Take for instance Mark Shuttleworth, who built Fort, the first authority to issue secure socket layers or SSL certificates, which publicly verify entities outside the US. And he did all of this from his parents' Durbanville garage. Amazon Web Services, the cloud computing leader, was conceived in the region. Fundamo, now a visa company, was founded by Hannes van Rensburg in Cape Town and launched the world's first mobile financial service for the unbanked in developing economies back in 2002. But today's generation includes companies like Yoko, Aerobotics, Sweep South, Jumo, Take A Lot and Future Forex, whose CEO Harry Sheza won the coveted 40 Under 40 Global Award in Banking and Finance. Even Luno, which has its name emblazoned on the top of one of the highest buildings in Cape Town CBD, was started here in 2013 by two South Africans. Marcus Swanepoel and Timothy Stranix. While it was launched from Cape Town, it initially had its headquarters in Singapore with another office in Stellenbosch, where it would then be able to be closest to its first large African customer. Eventually, they opened offices in other locations and they now have regional hubs in places like London, Singapore and Cape Town. These aren't just local success stories that sound impressive in an African context. These are companies competing globally and succeeding. CEOs from successful startups like Mixit, Triggerfish Animation Studios, and PSG, they readily attribute their growth from the talent pool that exists in Cape Town and its ecosystem. And that very same ecosystem continues to expand at the end of 2020. There were 550 tech companies and over 40,000 people employed in the tech sector in Cape Town alone. What separates a city with some tech companies from an actual tech ecosystem is the support infrastructure. Cape Town has built this systematically over two decades. The Silicon Cape Initiative, a non-profit private sector company organization introduced in 2009, works to establish an ecosystem that attracts and brings together local and foreign investors, technical talent and entrepreneurs. The goal is to foster world-class IP startup companies that can compete with similar hubs globally. Cape Town is home to over 30 venture capital firms which until recently even included Nasper's foundry. On top of that, there's an active community of angel investors. This density of support mechanisms creates something that FNB's former CEO, Michael Yodan, identified as a cultural overlap with Silicon Valley, a networking hub where wealthy entrepreneurs and tech specialists connect in places like coffee shops against interestingly architectural backdrops, speaking to the creative and unconventional spirits that embody tech entrepreneurship. But what kind of support do you think is most critical for early stage IT startups? Do they need funding, mentorship, or something else entirely? The international recognition that Cape Town has received isn't just feel-good marketing. It represents concrete assessments from organizations that track these metrics 
almost professionally. In a 2021 report from FDI Intelligence, a data division of the Financial Times Group, they show that Cape Town is one of the world's fastest growing regions for foreign direct investment. The ranking also awarded South Africa first place in Africa for economic potential, for economic potential for startups and status, as well as business friendliness. Cape Town was awarded second place after Cairo for FDI strategy after displaying impressive initiatives in creating necessary infrastructure for a thriving tech ecosystem. According to the World Bank's research report on doing business in South Africa, Cape Town ranked as the top metropolitan municipality in the country for ease of doing business. Startup Blink placed South Africa first as a global tech hub in Africa and Cape Town third as a startup hub in Africa. The consistent message across all of these rankings is pretty clear. Cape Town isn't just Africa's leading tech hub by African standards, it's becoming a serious player by global standards as well. Looking forward, the implications extend far beyond Cape Town itself. The Africa Wealth Report of 2024 predicts a 65% increase in Africa's millionaire population over the next decade, driven by growth in sectors like fintech, software development and even green tech. Currently, around 8% of South Africa's wealth stems from the tech sector, a figure projected to exceed 30% by 2045. As of December, Johannesburg boasted over 800 tech US dollar millionaires, while Cape Town had more than 450 of the same. This millionaire population is expected to grow significantly as both cities continue to attract tech entrepreneurs as well as investors. So, is Cape Town Africa's Silicon Valley? Well, the question itself almost misses the point. Cape Town has built something substantial and something real. A tech ecosystem with world-class infrastructure, genuine talent depth, meaningful investment flows, and international recognition. It's not trying to be Silicon Valley. It's being Cape Town. And all of that is proving to be more than enough right now and into the future. The numbers, the companies, the investments, and the international validation all point to the same conclusion. Africa's tech capital isn't an aspiration anymore. It's already here, it's operational, and it's competing globally. The real question now isn't whether Cape Town can become a tech hub, it's how far this momentum can carry the entire continent forward. But I want to know what your biggest takeaway from this deep dive into Cape Town's tech ecosystem actually is. And even if you're an entrepreneur, a developer, what does this make you think about or make you consider about Cape Town differently or does it reaffirm how you already felt about it? Thank you for watching this video up until this point. We hope that it was just as interesting for you to watch as it was for us to make for you. Maybe check out one of these other videos and hopefully they'll be just as interesting as this one. Cheers.